Welcome back guys to what will be the last Big Brother Little Brother battle of GPU June 2021. In this one, the 3DFX double GPU Voodoo 5 5500 is facing the single GPU Voodoo 4 4500. A few weeks ago we talked about the Voodoo 1, the first video card 3DFX launch to the general public and how it helped change PC gaming forever. 3DFX unfortunately had a short history, but all of the video cards they released were notable in one way or another. And today, we're going to talk about two of their last video cards. The double GPU original behemoth Voodoo 55500 will be the big brother and the little brother will be played by the single chip Voodoo 4 4500. When they were released in the year 2000, Nvidia was presenting some serious competition. This was the year of the GeForce 2. A refresh of the first GeForce, but with competitive prices, even cheaper than what 3DFX was offering with the Voodoo 4. So in this year, Nvidia had not only the price, but it also had the performance crown in the entry market with the GeForce 2 MX versus the Voodoo 4, and in the high-end market with the GeForce 2 GTS, Pro and Ultra versus the Voodoo 5. This is why both of these video cards are looked upon with curiosity and admiration, and not because of their performance, but because of their legacy because this was the year 3DFX went down and it did so for many reasons, but surely competition played a part on it. Okay, wipe your tears because it's time we take a look at both of these incredible video cards. Both of them use the VSA100 GPU chip. VSA stands for Voodoo Scalable Architecture. This means that it was designed to work alone or with many chips. Examples of these are the Voodoo 55500 with dual GPUs, 3DFX's last commercial video card, but there was also the Voodoo 5 6000 with 4 GPUs that although never got to the store shelves, some folks around the world were fortunate enough to get a hold of samples of working cards. Back to our big brother little brother face off, let's take a look at the little brother, the Voodoo 4 4500. It uses one VSA100 chip at 166 megahertz. It has 32 megabytes of SD RAM also at 166 megahertz with a 128 bit bus. It has two pixel shaders, two texture mapping units, and two render output units. Besides 3DFX's own Glide API, it supports DirectX 6 and OpenGL 1.1. Both the Little Brother and the Big Brother video cards came in PCI or AGP. This one is a PCI card and it costed $179 when it was released in the year 2000. The Big Brother is one of my favorite video cards. When this guy came out, I remember rounding up all of my family gift intentions and concentrating them into one so I could get this video card in Christmas of 2000. The Voodoo 5 is basically a Voodoo 4 times 2 It has two VSA100 chips, also at 166 MHz each, 64 MB of SD RAM with a 128-bit bus, it has two pixel shaders, two texture mapping units, and two render output units per chip, and of course, it supports Glide, DirectX 6, and OpenGL 1.1. The one we have here is AGP with a 2x interface, and this card's launch price in the year 2000 was $299. For the tests, we are using the Universal AGP test system with a 2.4 GHz Panium 4 in a VIA P4V MM2 motherboard, 512 MB of DDR RAM, and Windows 98. As usual, we're running games from around the time period of the video cards starting in 1998. From 1998, we have the revolutionary original Unreal game. It was developed by Epic Games and this game is basically a showcase for the original Unreal Engine and it supports the specific 3DFX API, Glide. And I have to say that Unreal is a game that seems like it was meant to run on a Voodoo, runs incredibly fast and looks really good. Thankfully, Unreal has a pretty complete statistics display and we can see that the Big Brother stays over an average of 120 FPS and as expected from half the video card, the Little Brother Voodoo 4 stays mostly above an average of 60 FPS. From 1999, we have Quake 3. Developed by ID Software, Quake 3 Arena is a competitive deathmatch FPS game and although this game was massively played and it's recognized as successful, this game disappointed me a bit because Quake is known for its single player campaign, which this game did not have. But anyhow, we're not here to put games down, we're here to see how the little brother did against the big brother and both video cards pull crazy frames in this time demo. 
The little brother finished the demo 1 in 22.5 seconds with 59.7 FPS and the demo 2 in 22.8 seconds with 61.2 FPS. The big brother finished the demo 1 in 12.8 seconds with 104.8 FPS and the demo 2 in 13.1 seconds with 107.1 FPS. So about 75% faster. From 2000 we have another staple of early 2000s gaming, Deus Ex. This game was developed by Iron Storm and it also has support for the Glide API, runs fast and has deep dialogues that do hook you into the story. Although both the video cards support 32-bit color, the game refused to accept the setting so it's running in 16-bit. Not a big deal, we can still run the test. The little brother stays mostly above 50 FPS, although occasionally it can drop to the 30s when there are other moving objects like the ED209 at the beginning of the game. Unfortunately, the dual GPU of the V5 has no effect on Deus Ex, resulting on the same performance for both the video cards. From 2001, we have Serious Sam First Encounter, a fast-paced FPS developed by Crow Team, and although it runs very well, in 2001, things start getting sketchy for owners of 3DFX video cards, and I was one of them. 3DFX had already closed its doors and had handed the key over to Nvidia and since February of 2001 it no longer supported its products, but some developers still included their API and made it work with existing drivers, this game is one of them. The Big Brother V5 stays mostly above 60 FPS, it can occasionally drop a bit in scenes where there is detailed scenery and many enemies, but usually stays well above 60 FPS. For the V4, if you were going to play this with this hardware, you would most likely lower the details and resolution, as performance is half of the Big Brother, and again, seeing as this is a fast paced game, when it drops below 30 FPS, it can be a bit challenging to shoot enemies down. The last year we are visiting is 2002, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast is a game we have to be very careful with, any Star Wars sound that we dare make can get us a copyright strike. This game was developed by Raven Software and it was published by LucasArts. It takes place in the expanded universe of the Star Wars series and it has a single player campaign and there is a land multiplayer that I would love to check out sometime. Yeah, we can still do this with our retro gaming community I suppose. The Voodoo 4 runs the game with at least 40 FPS, but usually higher, what I already thought was pretty impressive considering the game was released 2 years after the Voodoo 4. Unfortunately, the game doesn't take advantage of the extra GPU of the Big Brother, so both cards perform the same way. So in conclusion, both of these video cards were genuinely good. The Voodoo 4, in my opinion, was a bit overpriced for what it delivered, but the Voodoo 5 was really fast in most games. The downfall is the lack of support after 3D FX went down, and for the Voodoo 5, it's lack of support for dual GPU in some games. So don't forget to check out the GPU June playlist with tons of cool GPU videos from all kinds of creators. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, like the video if you like the idea of gaming with double GPUs, dislike the video if you want a game with integrated graphics for the rest of your life, and I'll see you next time.